So, you know, I've worked on countless battery powered designs, which means it's always important to get your standby current as low as possible. You know, sometimes you've got that resistor that's pulled up, pulled down, just leaching current out of your battery, but, uh, or even a rogue pin that you didn't strap the right way when you go to sleep. But what I'm going to show you in this video, if this ever happened to me on a design, this would be the most frustrating thing ever because this is crazy. So I made a video a while back on how to sleep the AT Mega 328. So I use this little board here uh, for that, that video, which is just a simple breakout board for the AT Mega 328P. And uh, recently, somebody reached out to me trying to replicate what was done in that video on a Pro Mini. So this has the same exact chip as what's on my board. And I've actually heard this before, people trying to replicate it, but they can't. And it's always the same kind of thing, like, oh, you know, there's a power LED on there that you have to remove, or there's the onboard regulator that has its own quiescent current draw. So, you know, you have to really strip it down and locate where all the current is at. So, uh, after some conversation with this guy, if we find out that he's actually pretty knowledgeable about these things and had already removed those components, but still he was pulling over 100 microamps from this AT Mega. So, I asked him to send these boards over to me. These are just cheap boards from eBay. Loaded up some code on the AT Mega there, and it was pulling pretty high. So... Here's kind of what I did to figure out what was going on. So forgetting about the Pro Mini for now, let's just go back to the original video with my board here, just as a baseline. Where were we at then, and what did the current look like? So here is the code that I'm going to test with on all of the boards here that you see. So we're just going to, you know, kill the uh, ADC, we're going to enable the sleep options, and then kill the brownout disabled, and then actually put it to sleep. And it just sleeps forever. Nothing can wake it up, there's no interrupts configured, there's no watchdog timers. It's just going to boot up and immediately go back to sleep. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what the sleep current is here with this code. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is test a board that I sell through my Tindy store as is. It's configured as an Arduino Mini. That's the bootloader that's, that's in there. And it's got a 16 megahertz resonator on board. And uh, these chips here, these AT Mega 328Ps, were all bought from DigiKey. And they're dated uh, from 2016. So we'll just upload this code real quick here. Okay, that's done. I'm going to remove the USB to serial converter and let's look at this sleep current. Well, there we go. I'm going to reset this. And you see the average current is like 75 nanoamps, so extremely low here. So that's our baseline, under 1 microamp obviously. Very good sleep current. So one of the the ideas was that the Pro Mini has a newer chip on it. Like I said, my boards all have chips from 2016. Uh, they are marked before the micro, uh, microchip acquisition. So maybe microchip changed something. Maybe the newer chips can't actually hit those sleep currents anymore. So uh, what I did next was I put an order into DigiKey with a special request that the chip has a 2020 uh, code on it. So that's the next test. What I did was I populated one of my boards now with a genuine 2020 part, so it's the latest and greatest, and hopefully it can still hit, hit this same nanoamp sleep current. Okay, here we go. I'm going to create a new log, and there you have it overlaid on the last reading, and it's almost identical. So uh, no change whatsoever from 2016 to 2020. So that basically leads me to believe that there's either something wrong with this board itself hosting the chip or maybe the chip is counterfeit. So let's go ahead and start testing the Pro Mini. So I actually did a lot of these tests off camera on the Pro Mini, but basically what I did was I loaded that same exact code here and you know, looked at the current and it was about, you know, a couple milliamps or whatever. So I pulled off the power LED. Uh, there was actually two LEDs on there. I just removed them both and the regulator right there. 
test it again and I did save the plot. You can see up there the current is uh, 141 microamps, so way, way, way too high. And uh, then I was kind of curious, maybe there's just something up with this board I'm missing. So I decided to just lift the chip off of there and relocate it to one of my boards. Okay, so I thought that would be a really good apples to apples kind of test. And let's look at what the current is now. All right, and here we go. We're going to add a new plot. Whoa. And there you have it. Way up there at 139 microamps of sleep current. So no change there. And what I also did here, just to make sure that everything here is identical, is I actually went back and loaded the same bootloader I did on my original board, so that's all exactly the same. It's same code, same everything. So that tells you that there is something definitely wrong with this chip. So let's look now at some close-ups of the, the chip itself. Well, maybe we should play a little game. Which chip is which? <laughs> so you see here that they all do look very different, and obviously you can see that this one in the middle is the original chip that is on the board that I currently have and sell in the Tindy store. This was before the microchip acquisition, so uh, they just marked the chips differently back then. So you see uh, it's a 2016 chip. Then right here is the latest and greatest I ordered from DigiKey. This is a 2020 batched chip. You can see even like the logo is a little smaller, pushed over right there. And then over here is the chip off of the Pro Mini. Now I kind of wish I had a better microscope to take these pictures, but you know, I'm like holding my phone up to the eyepiece just, to, just right to get these shots. But anyway, you can even see here in the Pro Mini one, this one's dated 2019, and um, it even looks very different from the 2020 version, and obviously a lot different from the 2016 version. So the logo's kind of like, actually it doesn't match either of those really. So anyway, that could be something to that, but also right here you see the country code is different. So. This one here, TH, I believe that's Thailand. The KR must be Korea, I think. So I doubt that that would make a difference here. Like, could it be possible that the Korean batch has this problem? So this part's genuine, but it's just because it was made there. I highly, highly doubt that. I would bet a lot of money that this part here off of the new Pro Mini is counterfeit. And I could actually send this off to a lab to be decapped and x-rayed and all that to see if, you know, they can actually prove that. But, but you know, I was thinking sometimes I do develop with boards I find on, you know, Amazon and eBay just because you can get the stuff pretty quick and they've got nice little development boards. But, man, can you imagine working on something knowing you're doing everything right but you still can't hit the right specs like <laughs> the sleep current? You know, that would really, really be a tough one to figure out because, you know, the last thing you think of, well, for a lot of people, is that the chip itself is counterfeit. But um, anyway, here you go. I could be wrong. So, you know, this part could be genuine, but maybe there's something else going on here. So uh, that's all I got for this video. Hope you found that interesting.